Hey everyone, it's Oz Chris, and I'm gonna be watching some cringe. Ah, uh, I love it. I just, I just love the cringe. Uh, specific kind of cringe. Also starts with a C. Crisis on Infinite Earths. So, I kind of know what happens, but I haven't properly seen like all of it. I've only seen other people talk about it. So, uh, particularly like EFAP when they did their videos on um each part of Crisis on Infinite Earths, that's the closest I've got to actually watching it, but I actually want to watch it myself. See how bad it is, because it's the CW, and they, uh, oh. <laughs> like, I used to like a lot of the CW's DC shows, like, I liked Arrow for the first two seasons, I liked Flash for the first two seasons, Legends was alright for, for season one, uh, did not care for Supergirl once they got it. Um, I think it even got worse when the CW got it because I think it was what it was ABC or NBC or something had it before CW got it for the second season onwards, and the quality just went downhill, even worse than C season one. And uh, Batwoman, oh, <laughs> oh, let's let's not talk about Batwoman, but um. Here I am with uh, part one, which was Supergirl's episode of Crisis on Infinite Earth. So let's get started on that. Is there, thank God there is closed captioning because uh, with the CW, for some reason, their voice range goes from mild to raspy librarian. Like, I don't know why people have to whisper. Uh, <laughs> it's not like they're trying to hide from people in every scene. Uh, you, you'll definitely see it with uh, Tom Kavanagh when he plays uh, any version of Wells recently, or Pariah as he plays in Crisis. Uh, he talks with like a whispery, raspy voice, even though he's in a room with like a lot of people. I don't know why it's annoying. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's get the party started. I've got my cringe goggles on. Gave everyone else on the Crisis team cringe goggles. So let's get started. In the beginning, there was only one, a single black infinitude. Single black infinitude? Is that is that the nickname for the dick Riley Reed gets in blacked? The end of the world is licking. <laughs> oh boy, Will Wheaton. Although to be fair, this is perfect casting. A uh, a raving lunatic saying shit that nobody cares about. Yeah, I think this that Will Wheaton was the perfect choice for this character. <laughs> oh. That fucking cut. Oh god. <laughs> don't do that ever again, please don't. Possible, but okay. Yes, yes, a fair descriptor, as would be uh unfeasible, unthinkable, absurd, outlandish. Oh boy, that's that's supposed to be Brainiac 5, isn't it? God, he's one of those characters. One of those I say a lot of technical words and I act weird and cause I'm I'm a smart man. Ugh. Oh my god, Superman's there with Lewis in my mom. Wait, but did did, did Martian Manhunter just fucking call Lois Lewis? Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Lowbrow? If only the citizens of Earth could see Cal L struggling with spit up. <laughs> this. EFAP brought this up. I can't remember who it was, but it was on EFAP. I don't. And I agree with them. I don't like when they refer to Superman as Cal L. Like. The only people that should really refer to him as that name are other Kryptonians, specifically maybe Kara and mainly Zod should would refer to him as his actual like name. It should be Clark. His name is Clark Kent. Lois would never I don't think Lois would ever refer to him as Kal-El. It would just be Clark or Smallville. We must set a course for Earth. Hopefully they'll have enough time to stop this wave before it hits. Are they doing, they did the Superman origin again, but with his son, and it, and it, this doesn't make sense anyway, because why would they make just one, sh one ship like that just to reference, like, a Superman origin? Th that only exists for that reference, it doesn't make sense in the story. Also, remember, Brainiac 5 said, that wave is traveling at an impossible speed. So how fucking fast is that escape pod? Is it impossible impossible? Beyond impossible? I, I, I doubt it. I don't think it's faster than a, an antimatter wave. 
Oh boy, that island. Ugh. So I think about all the people that it took from me. It would just, it would just make me so angry. Dad, why are we whispering? We're the only people on this island. It's because I'm trying to be Batman. Yeah, something tells me you're gonna create your own stories. Yeah, you're gonna have a series that is not going to happen because it probably got canned. Thanks to her. How did Superman get his clothes back? Did, does Lila have clothes beam powers like Piccolo? Clothes beam! <laughs> that is easily my most metro attack. That rabbit was about to talk. This one speaks to rabbits. If you think that's strange brain act, she also lets villains go free. Yeah, shocking, isn't it? She's a hero. I trust everyone in this room with my life, including you. Bad mistake, why would you trust that woman? Yeah, I've just managed to zero in on Jonathan's location in Star City. Well, that was a pointless, pointless scene. Why was that in there? We've done it a dozen times and we're going to do it again. How are you so hopeful, Rena? It's as if she's kind of some kind of paragon of hope. Just like you shared our home with your family, we shared our home with this whole world. Krypton's not just a place, it's a spirit. No, 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 no. If, if that Boso brought... It's not just a place, it's a spirit. Wow, you definitely didn't fucking rip that off from Thor Ragnarok. Asgard is not a place. It's a people. But, no, if that Boso brought this up, Clark's home is not Krypton. It's Earth. He was raised here. I don't think he would ever consider Krypton to be like, that is my one true place. That's where I belong. No, it's Earth. There should always be at least one Green Arrow. Well, to be fair, there at least should be an actual Green Arrow, not uh, not a uh, bow and archer, uh, an archer vigilante masquerading as a Batman-like character. You know, maybe, maybe do that first. Maybe actually get a Green Arrow before, you know, you say there st still needs to be one afterwards. Oliver, oh my god, stop it. Oliver, stop. Oh, please stop. Fucking hell. Acting. Something like that. Why are you pulling back on your bow when you have no arrow in there? Or was there an arrow and I just couldn't see it? If she's pulling it without any arrow in there, that is pointless. It was empty. So she was, she had her bow ready, or knocked, or whatever the term is, without an arrow in it already. Ugh. Considering you need a lot of strength to pull, pull that back, she was wasting strength doing that. Too close for comfort. Or you gotta one up me, huh? Because she's just so much better. Supergirl is just so much better. I think they did that in season two, when like, Superman was mind controlled or something and Supergirl beat him and he's like it's like oh I, I was at full strength I had no inhibitions and you were able to defeat me it's like no Superman has been there longer he's had his powers for much longer just from experience and time alone he is stronger I can't believe fucking shadow demons can be just defeated by Simple punches and kicks. And also, Barry, you are super fast. Fucking run and punch all of them. Bullshit. He had a full, he had almost a full fucking quiver. Bull fucking shit. Once upon a time, not anymore now. I'm simply a man serving his penance. See, this, this is what I'm talking about. Why is he, why is he whispering? You're in a room full of people. You don't necessarily have to use your indoor, indoor quiet voice. Yeah, so that was part one of Crisis on Infinite Earths. So, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I could see they, envi they envisioned it to start off much bigger, but because they have a TV budget, and it's a budget that is stretched thin between various other different shows, 
it's not possible. <laughs> and as a there, if I was a an, a writer or if even I was like an editor, I would just there was just so much that you could cut out because it was pointless. The whole the whole referencing uh, Superman's origins with uh, John um, that wasn't necessary, and then him having to find him in a uh, a different Earth, Earth whatever number was sixteen or whatever. And meeting the Oliver Queen of 2046, like, that is all pointless. Like, cut it out. They, obviously, they they wanted to pad their own time because every episode of this uh, CW series has to be f uh, over 40 minutes. So we have to, because when we put it on TV, it's over an hour. So because, you know, we put those ads in there. But, yeah, that, that was pointless. That random scene... Of Brainiac being like, is like I've tracked where John, where John is in Star City to that random woman, and he says, "Oh wait, I wasn't, no, I wasn't supposed to talk to you." Oh, this is awkward. Like that was, why was that there? Why was that there? Get rid of that. Um, yeah, not off to a good start. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm planning to watch all of it. <laughs> I know next, next, the next part is Batwoman's episode, where we have Kevin Conroy be Bruce Wayne, and oh boy, did they, did they do him dirty. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. But yeah, that was, uh, that was Crisis on Infinite Earths part one. Uh, thank you all, f thank you all for suffering, for suffering alongside me. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, check me out on Twitch, and I will see you all in the next one.